What's up my ninjas? I'm Strident and I'm back with another review. This time I'm reviewing the Assassin's Creed Black Flag Cry Freedom or Freedom Cry uh, Adwale figure. Um, I was really excited about this figure because it represents something I didn't think I was ever going to see in a video game. You know what I mean? Them taking the whole slave trade thing and then mixing it in with pirates and whatnot. You know, because a lot of us uh, people of uh, like West Indian and um, Brazilian descent, shit, we got a lot of, um, you know, a lot of our heritage is mixed up in that. So I was like, man, and the, and the design is really cool. So it kind of was like, yeah, I have to pick this character up. Now, um, I already did the review for um, Aveline and you, you know, some of the same issues that I had with that figure still are prevalent here. And there are also issues that were prevalent in my reviews for the uh, Walking Dead figures also by McFarlane. Now it's strange because McFarlane actually hasn't been so bad when it comes to, uh, excuse me, when it comes to uh, articulation over the years. If you've had any of the Halo figures, you know that those figures have really good articulation. I mean, they're very capable of taking all the poses that you can try to put them in. I mean, the the worst thing on them is their some of their arms they just don't bend far enough or they don't come in far enough on their you know torso upper torso like their shoulder joints don't work they're not cut deep enough so that you can put their arms close enough to properly hold their you know guns especially rifles anything that's two-handed these guys have similar issues with their arms but the legs don't have much movement on Adwale for some reason I can actually get a decent amount of movement, more movement than what I got with um, Aveline. So, um, yeah, that's something to keep in mind with this guy. But uh, I'm digging just about everything design-wise on this guy. I mean, his face looks cool. The double uh, hidden blades are awesome. I mean, the whole pirate motif of his uniform or assassin slash pirate and then all the weapon storage and everything on him is just really nice I mean they they really went out of their way to make this look legit um, mine the only QC issue I had was when I went to move the uh, head the a piece of the uh, you see that a piece of his hood came off but I can glue that back in you know that's not a big issue so, you know, with that being said, I'm going to get into his articulation. Before I get into the articulation, I just want to take a quick look at this sculpt. I mean, I've been showing you all of the little details of this character, you know, throughout the previous portion. But, I mean, you just got to admire the sculpt. I mean, this has always been where McFarlane shines. And uh, this figure is no different. I mean, sculpt-wise, it almost feels like a NECA figure. Um, the articulation though is probably the place that you know kind of weighs it down and separates it from NECA in a negative way but I mean you've got to admire all the intricate uh, sculpt work all throughout this figure it truly is some amazing sculpt work man every little detail all right we're taking a look at Adwale and uh, I think we're going to get into his articulation really quick. Um, he has the same range of motion in his uh, you know, arms as many of the Walking Dead figures and as Aveline had. Which is, you know, it's not bad. I expected a little bit more, but, you know, I'm not going to nitpick and nitpick and nitpick to the point where this just gets crazy. Uh, it's getting crazy. So anyway, arms move up this much. Move out that much is about almost 90 degrees. Um, you have this weird kind of a rotation. Let me move this out the way. Wow. Um, you have this rotation at his wrist, but then there's also a kind of a swivel that goes either this way, but because the, the hand is on a peg, so it can swivel this way, but then there's also a swivel right here, kind of, you know, a little bit of the way down into his actual uh, 
forearm or wrist and that itself can swivel once you have the the hand you know position you won't really get much of it on this because the arm guards get in the way but you also have a swivel at the elbow joint too so it's a lot of redundant uh, articulation um, the head now because like I said when I moved his head the first time the the thing came off you can see his neck is on a ball joint so you can get him to look up you can get him to look down a little bit well a lot actually you can look down a pretty decent amount um, he can look side to side he can get a little bit of the neck the you know head tilt so he's got a decent range of motion in the head he's got a twist in the um, waist it's kind of stiff right now and all of this around his waist kind of uh, hinders it then his legs can do a split about this much I was like wow really so I can at least kind of get him in you know dynamic poses I mean check this out I was really surprised that I could do this with him now the legs are on a ball they're in a ball socket joint but look at that you can kind of get his legs far apart the feet are on ball sockets or ball hinges whatever you want to call it which is nice because that's what SH figure arts uh, a lot of us a lot of Bandai figures tend to do that SICs do it so like you know you have him getting ready to attack someone you could put his hand up like this turn his waist just a little bit and you got some dynamic posing going on he looks like he's getting ready to do something you know what I mean it doesn't look so static I just wish they had like SH figure arts or shit even Thundercats classics uh, you know articulation because then I could make him you know squat down in one of those like you know turn his put his hands out I mean this guy's got that huge shoulder pad and still I can get him to do something like this you know and then have him like with the hidden blade getting ready to pop out or have the one hidden blade out here and the other one about to you know like he's getting ready to pounce you know just look at how that looks from above like oh man missed opportunity I'm telling you but uh he overall has you know like I said the same articulation as many of the Walking Dead figures and as Avaline and uh, sorry about the dead air just had to put him back how I found him I will be reviewing those guys soon articulate I mean uh, I'm sorry accessory wise he's got a lot of freaking accessories um, so you've seen the uh, machete and this is beautiful this thing is gorgeous I mean I was kinda surprised at how uh, well detailed this machete is and he can hold it just fine I mean he doesn't hold it tight but you know like I said these guys are more of statues than action figures so there you go with that so you can be like whoo, getting ready to slice somebody's head off or, whoo, and it, it looks really good it's just like a giant meat cleaver the paint is really well done there's a lot of detail on the uh, turn this this way there's a lot of detail on the handle if you can see all that like uh, Jesus I don't have my trusty oh yeah I do my pencil I was using for a pointer you can see there is like a little like a skull and crossbones right there there's the little uh, what do they call those things god I'm forgetting stuff anyway these little like pegs that they put on top of the wrapped handles those are nicely painted no slop around those on the edges where anytime there's silver it looks awesome you know even here it looks kinda worn even though that's because the paint job isn't perfect it lends itself to the character of this blade you know it's very well done skull and crossbones is on the other side as well Let me turn it at an angle so you can see it better skull and crossbones right there so you've got that you've got the almighty blunderbuss which many uh, reviewers keep referring to as the shotgun because in video game land it kinda feels like the same weapon but blunderbusses were pretty damn powerful and uh, they're like the one hitter the ancient one hitter quitter <laughs> so um, 
I really like the design of this thing and all the 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 look and he holds it fairly well he just can't put his finger on the goddamn trigger which is so stupid like why give them a weapon and then not allow them to be able to actually use the weapon you know but it's nicely uh, sculpted you can like I said you could have him with the machete the machete 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 you can have the machete in one hand and then have the uh, what is he doing now machete in one hand and the blunderbuss in the other hand and it actually doesn't look bad it actually could look like something's about to go down he's about to put it down put them down Adwali do it my friend you must kill them kill them all do not let them hurt our people <laughs> um but you see what I'm saying? It actually looks pretty badass. It doesn't look stupid. It actually looks pretty raw. I'm just, I'm impressed with the, the detail on this figure and the weapons that the, the figure comes with, you know? Because I, like I said, I didn't expect him to have all that detail and stuff, you know? Um, I'll try and take some individual pictures of these things so you guys can see the weapons, you know, just themselves. But, Jesus. Whew. That's, this is one of the things I hate about quote-unquote quick reviews. They always end up being longer because of technical difficulties because I'm much better at taking simple pictures than I am at, you know, trying to do these in-camera reviews. But, uh, you know, I'm trying to do it because I want it to be a little bit more comprehensive. But just another look at it. Hopefully this is clear. See all the little details on it. Especially when I put it in, in the light where you can see the shine and stuff. Nice paint variation. The wood looks like wood. The gold and silver parts look like silver and gold. You know, everything is the little filament piece up here with the wick and all that. It's, it's, it's all in place. It all looks good. I don't know. I'd, I'd give him props for that. Um, then you have the blowgun. This blowgun's a little different from the one that... Uh, Avalon came with. It's got the silver tip on the front of it. Wooden piece on the back of it. Looks good. It's very simple. And he actually can hold it. So, you know, you actually could make him look like he's about to, you know, assassinate someone via blowpipe. You know? <laughs> so, that's good. And that's just about all the, the pieces that you can actually store on his body you know then you have obviously your retracted you have two retracted hidden blades and two uh you know extended hidden blades and then of course because he was a slave you have the bondages i was kind of at first i was kind of mad but then i was like you know what this is actually a decent little uh uh like accessory that I could use for like he-man stuff you know what I'm saying because you could put them in chains or something you know like I'm not putting him back in chains because that shit's done that's the whole point of the character but you know if you wanted to have like a, a, a scene where so-and-so got snatched up by you know the evil horde or by Skeletor or something even though these aren't very tight they don't clip on and hold they're very rubbery so you'd have to get their hands in a pose that wouldn't resist the plastic you know what I'm saying you can kind of, you know, oh my god, they've, I'm locked up. They won't let me out. Like, she's stuck. Look at her. Oh, god. Let me go. I mean, obviously, she wouldn't be locked up with all her weapons and shit. You know? Like, uh, Wonder Woman or something could do that. But, uh, you know what I'm saying. It's, it's a cool little piece that you can you can kind of add to your uh, your collection of little cool pieces <laughs> you know for setups I guess if you're in a, into ACBA you could go along with uh, using that kind of thing for such a situation and it would actually work really well but uh, overall I like Adwale I'm, I'm glad I picked him up 
Um, like I said before, they could use so much more articulation and, and, and range of motion in the legs. Just simplify. I mean, since their legs are so covered up, you could just not even paint, not even sculpt the actual crotch joint and just put the barbell and a, a piece holding that in place and then let the legs roam as free as possible because you wouldn't have anything uh, in the way and not, no no one would really be looking underneath all that you know what I'm saying but you know that's me thinking in a more logical way than the guys that make this stuff and that's the biggest problem I have with the guys that make this stuff they're not very logical when it comes to most of the things that you need to make these figures all that so um you know but overall like I said he's not a bad figure I mean, I'm sick and tired of pointing out how much they need to get away from whatever it is they're doing with these crappy, uh, uh, you know, leg joints and shit. They need to stop that crap. It doesn't look right. It doesn't make them look good. It doesn't make them look, uh, you know, official. The leg joints suck and they need to get rid of them. And all you guys reviewing these figures and ignoring that shit, um, yeah, thanks for fucking up you know people's experience you know their purchasing experience because we we're not all fanboys and some of us want to know that we're getting what we were told we would get you know or what we thought we would get logically just based on who these characters are because I'm tired of you know you buy American figures and it's an American figure of a character that's super agile and then uh, they don't have posability you know what I mean like like the ultra posable Spider-Man that we got from the Amazing Spider-Man 1 that was not ultra posable. Like what the hell was that about? How did you how did you screw that up, you know what I mean? They remind me of these two seeing them side by side it's like uh Hansel and Gretel witch hunters if they were brown. <laughs> Oh man, but that would have been dope, right? If they designed them like this and had them fight like these guys. I'm hoping that in part two, they do that. And I'm sorry for jumping all over the place. My mind has been really busy lately. A lot of shit going on, but uh, you know, like I said, overall, not bad figures. As far as just figures that will exist and just stand there and just look cool on your shelf. As far as action figures go, they're almost terrible because you can't really do too much with them. I would love to see someone do some stop motion with their joints as they are. They would literally have to disassemble those crotch joints to allow them to kick or get the crotch assembly from something like, you know, one of these guys so that they can give them the proper range of motion so they can achieve the movements that they actually pull off in the video game and all the cutscenes and all that shit. But anyway, this has been my review of uh, Adwale from Assassin's Creed uh, Black Flag uh, Freedom Cry. It's a uh, kind of a downloadable content add-on to uh, Black Flag. Um, these were done by McFarlane. I like them for different reasons than I like the majority of the action figures that I own. I almost don't consider these guys. You gotta be fucking kidding me. Really? So much like I said in the uh, video I did for uh, Avalon, you know, sometimes I like to mix and match them in an RPG kind of sense. And uh, they play well with other figures as far as the look, you know, and the detail. I have a lot of old McFarlane figures when they were kind of dabbling in more articulation, as well as old uh, Toy Biz figures. And, you know, I just throw random thing pieces on them, give them different armor, do different things with them. But when you see them all together, they really look... You know, like they could have existed in some RPG that we didn't get or maybe some RPG that we haven't played yet. Excuse me. Burking up a storm and whatnot. But anyway, uh, <laughs> the, uh, you know, it, it's cool to see the details work well with other figures in your collection. And uh, that's one of the saving graces with them, you know, displaying them with other figures and they don't really look bad per se, you know. But, uh, you know, I really wish their articulation was better. That's my biggest issue with these guys, is they need better articulation. Okay, so as I was saying before, I was rudely interrupted by them busting their asses. Um, 
if you can get past the fact that they are more statuesque, which is in line with what we're kind of used to, if you've been a long time uh, McFarlane toys collector, you know that typically there was a, a period of time where he gave us statues with very limited articulation, then you'll be fine with these, you know? But the fact that they have so much articulation in all these other spots and then there's shitty articulation in the legs, for people who collect figures like SH Figure Arts or SIC or, you know, anything else, G.I. Joe, Transformers, He-Man, Marvel Legends, Marvel Selects, DC UCs, um, uh, old Toy Biz, Lord of the Rings, freaking Ninja Turtles, the new, new ones, the old ones, Halo, everything else, when you compare them to these figures, as far as articulation goes, they're kind of shit, you know what I mean? So, it depends on what you want them for. So, you know, in line with that, these guys are pretty good. As far as sculpting goes, I mean, I can't say that there's many places I can find better sculpting. McFarlane and them have top-notch top -notch sculptors, and they also have top-notch painters, better than DC Direct or DC Collectibles. Uh, in many cases, better than, way better than Marvel, um, I'm sorry, than uh, Hasbro, you know, way, and, it, and in some cases, it's some of the same people. So it's just one of those things where if you're getting them so they can stand up and look good standing still, it's a win. If you want to actually pose them so they look like they have the persona and personality and whatever of the characters from the actual games, you might be a little disappointed because these guys are not very posable. So anyway, I'm Strident. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. This has been my review of the Assassin's Creed Black Flag Cry Freedom at Dwale. And uh, that's it for me. You've been great. Peace outside.